Hey there, welcome to Table Tennis Philosophy. Today we're going to talk about length of your strokes. Uh, in fact, we can talk about forehand, backhand, uh, even pushes and chops. And one of the things I've noticed as I've been coaching over the years is that sometimes the length of a person's stroke does not match uh, what they should be doing for the particular ball that's coming. So let me give you some general things about forehands and backhands. Um, and these, these are not carved in stone because there are certainly exceptions, but the closer you are to the table, quite often the shorter the stroke you're going to have to have. If, if you're right up on the table and somebody makes a strong shot at you, it not only it shouldn't be a long stroke, you may have to make a short stroke. In some cases, you might have to make no stroke. You might, you might just need to put your racket there. And oddly enough, a lot of players are not used to doing that and they are not comfortable with that. So that puts them at a huge disadvantage anytime they're right up on the table and they uh, get a ball coming right at them very, very fast and they're not used to a blocking, just get the, get the racket in front of it kind of thing. So um, one of the, really good things that I'd learned from uh, a, another coach at one years ago was that for balls that are short, really short, right over the table, the stroke is actually the primary, is primarily done with the wrist. For your normal distance where you would be kind of where you normally warm up from, you'll notice players doing a relatively small stroke and uh, that should be primarily from your elbow, okay? And as you back further up, now you get the longer strokes. Uh, they're gonna be a little easier to uh, make work from further back. You have a little more time to get that longer stroke into play. And it's more from your shoulder. Obviously, you want to use your whole body for it. It's not just strictly from your shoulder, but the main joint being your shoulder there. And um, you can analyze your game pretty quickly. You know, if you're finding you're missing shots at a certain distance or that you're not used to blocking at all, then that's going to be a problem. And if you're... Uh, it can work the other way too. If you're backing off the table and just using your arm, you're not, you're certainly not going to get the power that you need from there. I know some players who even warming up are kind of just barely doing it. So when you talk about table tennis strokes, you want to get the correct stroke. You want to get the uh, correct movement on it. But something that's sometimes not noticed or players don't really realize they're doing it, but coaches realize it very quickly is exactly how long that stroke should be. So loops, obviously a bigger stroke. And here's something about loops also. If you, if you have a really big stroke, you, the more and more you have to use your body. When you're seeing a, a player that's dropping his racket all the way down around his ankles and making a big stroke, uh, that means you've got to bend your knees, you've got to use your whole body. Now, not every player does that, not every player is capable of doing that kind of stroke. Um, but if you are doing a regular looping stroke where you don't go quite as far down. You still need to bend your knees, use your body, get your uh, power from the bottom of your feet, finishing up. And another way you can make a stroke too long is to go too far with it. Okay, now I've gone too far and I'm not gonna be in a good position to recover. Now, it is possible to finish your stroke pretty far up here if you're further back from the table, it's gonna give you more time to recover. But at mid distance, if you're way up here or close to the table, if you're way up here, anytime that next ball comes back, you're in uh, a bad position to return the next one. It's nice to get one great loop in, but it's better to be able to recover and do a second and third one if need be. 
Um, chops, uh, something about the length of the strokes of chops. Um, a push over the table is essentially a little chop, but it's done more fingers, wrist, elbow, get close to it, shrink it down. The more you can feel it right down to your fingertips, the better your pushes are gonna be. Um, the dexterity you need can't be done from your shoulder. It's gotta be from elbow down even to your fingertips to get that push. So it actually, most of the time, should be fairly small. It certainly can't be, if you try to do that big, you know, a, an aggressive push and do it from your shoulder, you're, you're gonna put the ball in the net or just miss it completely in some other way quite often. And um, again, I think uh, the further you back up, the really good choppers have pretty big strokes because they're really uh, further back from the table, bigger stroke, more spin, um, more, more chance to uh, put some different types of spin on the ball and cause more problems. A, just a moderate chop from mid distance, if it's not done well, is probably gonna come back at you pretty fast. So um, you wanna do your strokes right, and you wanna do them the right length stroke at the right time, really important. All right, thanks, see you next time.